Hello, everyone. Uh, we are the Lucid Project, and today we're going to be talking about our um, research on the South Atlantic Anomaly. Uh, so a bit of recap from earlier about what the South Atlantic Anomaly is. Uh, so it's an area of higher than usual radiation and, um, uh, because it's where the inner Valanum belt is at its closest point to the Earth's surface, at about 120 miles. Um, and the Van Allen belt is, a, is an area of energetic charged particles which are thought to have originated from uh, solar winds and cosmic rays and are held in, point, uh, held in place by the Earth's magnetic field. Um, so what is the problem with the South Atlantic anomaly? Why, why do we want to research it? So uh, it's a danger for spacecraft which are orbiting the Earth um, that pass through that zone as it exposes them to several, high minutes of, uh, several minutes of high radiation. Uh, you can see um, a map of what is considered a South Atlantic anomaly. Um, uh, and... Uh, it's been linked to several satellite failures as well as um, it's been known to cause laptops to crash aboard spacecraft orbiting uh, in that area. Uh, furthermore, the International Space Station has extra shielding to deal with the radiation and the Hubble telescope does not take images in that area. Well, what we're doing is we're using large amounts of data from Lucid to, to graph and visually graph numerically the representations of this data. Our initial question is, can we quantify and compare this data to help investigate the South Atlantic anomaly? What is LUCID? LUCID stands for the Langton Ultimate Cosmic Ray Intensity Detector, and it has five time picks chips on it. They're in like a cube shape, apart from one of the sides is missing. The idea was thought of by a former student, and it was launched in 2014 on the Satellite Tech Demo Sat 1. So some more recap of what the time picks chips are. So they're radiation detecting chips, which are developed at CERN with the Medipix collaboration. Um, they have 256 by 256 little pixels, um, which can detect when ionizing radiation impacts the surface. Um, so, um, and uh, you, you, they produce what's uh, frames, which are basically where um, it's an image produced of which of the pixels have been impacted by ionizing radiation within a certain time frame. Um, so you can see an example of what one of the frames looks like there. Um, you can see the, the 256 by 256 pixels. And um, different types of radiation are identified based on what shape they make uh, in the frame. So you can see an alpha particle makes a large, a large spot, a uh, beta particle is a little wiggly line, and um, gamma photons will make much smaller dots. Uh, the code we wrote was used to separate the data inside the South Atlantic anomaly and outside it. What we initially did was read in, read in the data from TAPAS into a long list of an array. Then we would do a for loop to compare the data inside with the longitudes and latitudes and then compare it to the data outside with longitudes and latitudes of the outside of the South Atlantic anomaly. And then with this data in the list, we can graph it to, prov to prov provide a visual representation of it. Here's just an example of what, what our program is capable of. I mean, it, it shows the muons inside the South Atlantic anomaly and shows the number of muons on the y-axis and the frame number on the x-axis. Um, and you can also see uh, some data comparison that our, our code achieved from the, uh, from the data. So uh, you can see the averages for inside the South Atlantic anomaly and the averages for outside. Um, these are averages per frame. Um, so you can see, if you look at the top, just at the average for uh, any type of radiation, you can see that it is higher for, um, for the South Atlantic anomaly. Uh, so what we've done here is we've used the, the lucid data to provide numerical evidence of the existence of the South Atlantic anomaly. And then if you look at the averages for the, the different types of radiation, um, they're all uh, obviously higher for the South Atlantic anomaly, but um, uh, the averages for gamma is only uh, slightly higher compared to the others. Um, Gamma is uncharged, whereas the other types of radiation do have a charge. And so what this is showing um, is that the South Atlantic anomaly is definitely due to particles which are held in place by the magnetic field, uh, as it is the charged particles which are uh, in much greater quantities. Our next steps are to develop the code and its capabilities so that we can add a comparison over time of how, of how and where the South Atlantic anomaly moves and changes. I mean, current, currently we're using the frame number as the x-axis, but we would like to change this because it doesn't give a full representation of the time period between each frame. So what we'd like to do is add, so it's got a, 
the exact interval time between each frame and graph it like that. Like that. Well, that's it. Thank you. Um, which agency sent up your chip to the to space? What? What? How did you get your what, chip into space? Yeah, it's UK. Oh, it's the UK Space Agency. <laughs> Thank you. Pass that one along. Right, other questions about projects and what they've gotten involved with? Ah, yep, yeah, well, excellent. Um, so for Lucid, um, you mentioned those sort of averages were per frame. Did you do like a calculation for a large amount of data, more than just one frame, the averages? Um, We used all of the data that was on Tapas. Um, so for inside the South Atlantic anomaly, uh, the averages from a f are calculated from about 250,000 frames, oh, okay. whereas for outside, the averages are from about 3.5 million frames. So it, it's a lot of data. <laughs> it's the code of pretty long run time, but it did produce... <laughs> it did give the code a pretty long run time, but it did produce... Ac it should produce accurate answers. And then that's per frame. Uh, or yeah, it, it, what it gives out is the total number of alpha, alpha particles inside beta, gamma, etc. And it also gives the number of frames it's it's checked. It's those have added up, and then we worked out the averages from that. Oh. Right. right, good. Very well done. Thank you very much, James. <laughs>